Welcome back to the Mobility Project. Just got off the phone with an athlete friend who was uh, maybe diagnosed originally with a biceps tear. He turns out he didn't tear his biceps on MRI, but what ended up happening is said his tendinosis, which is kind of an inflammation of the tendon sheath, through the whole system was pretty junky. The tendinosis of his bicep, the kind of high proximal insertion, the distal insertion, said that a lot of his rotator cuff was junky too, and that basically he had this kind of chronically inflamed, pissed off tissue. The problem with running around like that is that we're all training hard, we're all training heavy, we're on the borders of kind of disaster sometimes when you're at the limits of human performance. You cannot be running around with your, you know, your layers of silk sliding over steel springs and have them be jellied and junky and cold and uh, problematic because that's, that's kind of the mechanism for a catastrophic failure. Remember that that rotator cuff sits in that scapula much like an octopus and if I flip that octopus over, then I've got some arms that are too compressed and can't control, and some arms are stretched, and then so what ends up happening is I lose that beautiful length tension relationship that steers the arm around. So the very first thing I talk about with this athlete is we've got to control inflammation, get him off the gluten, let's make sure he's on the fish oil, he's drinking water, he's putting his electrolytes in his water, we've got to take care of that systemic inflammation. He's also got to restart some kind of some tendon stretching, tendon healing control. He's got an ART friend, he's got a physio friend he's going to work with. But one of the things we can do is we can start loading, you know, and thinking about kind of the fascial trains, fascial planes. I can load that bicep and can stop right before I have onset of pain. So this is not the kind of thing I want him to do before he exercised, but I want him to start thinking we've got to restore that motion. Tight, shortened tissues end up being not as extensible. He felt like he heard it because as he was pulling that car out of the ditch in the snowy region, that shoulder translated forward. So we've got sort of a few things we're going to think about. One, I've got to treat that tissue, get it healthy again. Two, you know, that's what like a, that's a, the warning call. Something's going to, catastrophic is going to happen. Two, you know, we've got, got to stop taking the ibuprofen if that's, you're having this kind of chronically inflamed state. Talk to your physician about that. But if he, this guy has bilateral histories of torn, tearing his biceps, maybe some other tear, look at what are the mechanisms that are kind of underlying that possible tissue injury. Then we got to think, how do we improve that position and uh, unload that? And what we're thinking of, right off the bat, of course, is, boy, I can do a lot of that overhead work. So um, getting the ball on the thoracic spine to open that up, working on kind of improving scapular, you know, thoracic mechanics. But uh, what we're going to do today is uh, ultimate shoulder mode, which we haven't done for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and get that band into an arm, into a good distracted position. Uh, that pulls that shoulder laterally, grab the arm, and I'm going to try to get the head of that shoulder to the ground. Remember when Dave Tate says, take the bar out, count for a full two seconds? What's happening is that you're getting shoulder approximation, bringing those joint surfaces together. Arm comes here, and then I'm going to externally rotate for two seconds. So I'm trying to improve the relationship now of arm to shoulder blade hanging out in this position, working for that extra rotation, getting that shoulder blade and, and kind of uh, uh, head of the arm to drop to the back of the socket, improve that kind of posterior stretch, hanging out here, and then adding that little rotation makes a big, big difference. The second thing that I'm thinking about with him, that's going to reset that shoulder, get him into a mechanically more advantageous position, is that as he's tight, if his shoulder's rotating forward and translating forward, that's the mechanism for biceps tear. That's why you'll see really, really strong guys pulling huge weights with straps, still using an overhand hook grip because it allows them a better external rotated position. As soon as that mixed grip happens, that's when we tend to see that shoulder come forward. That's the bicep that ruptures. So if I'm missing internal rotation, that shoulder comes forward and there's my problem. I've loaded that tendon with that translational loading effect. So always mobilize in a good position. Shoulder the back of the socket, grab that hand, and I'm just going to go ahead and camp out, pulling that hand across using the band to keep my shoulder in the back of the socket, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tie my neck into this whole complex. And I'm going to go ahead and do two minutes here, contract, take up the slack, wind up. There's a lot of ways you could do the bully stretch in this position, but I think that this is nice, keeping the shoulder back, it really gets into that corner effectively, and so in that I can actually load and get my shoulder into an idealized position. So two minutes. Each side, short M1 today, but I really want you to camp out, understand the relationship of the neck to the shoulder. That's what's at stake. Deal with your junky tissues. Don't let that become a problem. Look at the mechanics, how you're compensating. Restore motion. Talk to you guys tomorrow.